a very good morning to all the student the topic for the today's lecture is regarding hip joint we will see the type articular surface ligament relations blood supply nerve supply the movements and the applied anatomy related with the hip joint let's see the type it is a multi axial joint which is having ball and socket variety of the synovial joint so before dealing with the entire the hip joint let's know some of the features that is present in hip bone and in the proximal aspect of the femur that is both the anterior view and the posterior view of the the femur this is known as the acetabulum well this is known as the lunate surface of the acetabulum and this is known as the margin of the acetabulum and the notch which is present here this is known as the acetabular notch well this is known as anterior superior iliac spine and this is known as anterior inferior iliac spine this is known as the anterior view of the proximal aspect of the femur which is having greater trochanter lesser trochanter and the line which is present here this is known as intertrochanteric line while this is known as the posterior view of the proximal aspect of the femur this is known as the greater trochanter this is known as the lesser trochanter and we have the area this is known as intertrochanteric crest while this is known as the head which is having fovea or known as fovea capitis the articular surface medially it articulates with the lunate surface of the acetabulum that you can see here in the diagram and laterally it articulates with the head of the femur and which is covered with the help of hyaline cartilage now the stability of the hip joint depends upon the depth of the acetabulum narrowing of the mouth of the acetabulum labrum the tension and strength of the surrounding ligaments the strength of the surrounding muscles which is present near the hip joint the length and the oblique pattern of the neck of the femur as well as the atmospheric pressure near the hip joint now these all are the main ligament that is present near the hip joint so we have the term known as fibrous capsules synovial membrane acetabular labrum iliofemoral ligament pubofemoral ligament ischiofemoral ligament transverse acetabular ligament and ligament of head of femur which is also known as ligamentum teres femoris so let's know about fibrous capsules and this fibrous capsules it is strong and dense we have the attachment that is above and below so above it is attached to the hip bone that is near the margin of the acetabulum which is 5 to 6 mm beyond the acetabular labrum then it is also attached to the transverse acetabular ligament that is near the acetabular notch and it is also attached to the bone above and behind the acetabulum now below it is attached to the intertrochanteric line in the anterior aspect or in front and behind it is attached 1 cm medial to the intertrochanteric crest you can see here this is the attachment of the fibrous capsules in the anterior aspect that is in the intertrochanteric line and here in this diagram it is attached to the uh, medial aspect of the or few cm medial to the intertrochanteric crest now we have the features related with the fibrous capsules so it is having fibers that is known as the outer longitudinal fibers and inner circular fibers these outer longitudinal fibers it is the part reflected along the neck of the femur to form a retina cula so the blood vessels of the head and neck of the femur passes along the retina cula and we have the inner circular fibers that is known as zona orbicularis which is forming a collar or ring around the neck of the femur that you can see here this is in the diagram zona orbicularis and above we have the outer longitudinal fibers and it is thicker in the anterior aspect because it is subjected to maximum strength or the tension in the standing posture and it is thinner in the postero inferior aspect so let's know about synovial membrane it lines the inner aspect of the fibrous capsules and to the intracapsular portion of the neck of the femur glenoid labrum transverse acetabular ligament acetabular pad of fat then also to the ligament of the head of the femur you can see here the next ligament that is known as the acetabular labrum so it is a fibrocartilaginous ring 
attached to the margin of the acetabulum. This is known as, in the diagram, this is known as the acetabular labrum, which is attached to the margin of acetabulum. Now, it, it narrows the mouth of the acetabulum, so helps in holding the head of the femur. Then you can see here, this brown color is indicating this is known as acetabular labrum. Let's know one of the strongest ligament that is known as iliofemoral ligament. It is triangular. It is inverted Y-shaped ligament, also known as ligament of big low. It is one of the strongest ligament of the body. And the function is it prevents the trunk from falling backwards in the standing posture. Above, it is attached to the anterior inferior iliac spine and below, it is attached to the intertrochanteric line. And you can see here in the diagram, the iliofemoral ligament is having three band, that is known as the lateral thick band. Then again, it is having medial thick band and a central thin portion will be present in the iliofemoral ligament. And this lateral band, it is also known as iliotrochanteric ligament. You can see here above, it is attached to the anterior inferior iliac spine and below it is attached to the intertrochanteric line. The next ligament is known as the pubofemoral ligament. It supports the joint from the inframedial aspect. This green color ligament is known as the, the pubofemoral ligament. So attachment above into the iliopubic eminence that is the junction between the ilium as well as the, the pubic bone. This is known as the iliopubic eminence to the obturator crest then also to the obturator foramen this is known as the obturator foramen and in the obturator foramen we have the membrane so it is attached to the membrane also and below it merges with the fibrous capsules and also to the lower band of iliofemoral ligament let's know about the other ligament that is known as ischiofemoral ligament so it is a spiral disposition near the hip joint directed upwards and laterally and it is comparatively weak and it extends from the ischium to the acetabulum. The fibers of ischiofemoral ligament also forms the zona orbicularis. Some fibers are attached to the greater trochanter and deep to the iliofemoral ligament also. Now next ligament is known as transverse acetabular ligament. Now in the diagram this is known as the transverse acetabular ligament while this is known as the acetabular notch, right? So it is strong, flattened fibers bridges the acetabular notch it means notch is converted into a foramen here so the acetabular notch is converted into a foramen so that the nerves and vessels can passes into the joints and also gives attachment to the ligament of head of femur in reality what is the difference between this acetabular ligament and the the acetabular labrum in the acetabular labrum we have the cartilage cells but in the transverse acetabular ligament so it is not having the cartilage cells so this is the difference between the transverse acetabular ligament and the acetabular labrum now next ligament is known as ligament of head of the femur and this ligament of the head of femur is triangular it is round above and which is known as the apex and it is wider below right and we have to know the attachment above it is attached to the pit of the fovea of the head of the femur that is also known as fovea capitis and below it is attached to the transverse acetabular ligament also to the acetabular notch and it is covered with the help of the synovial membrane so in the semi flexed as well as in the adducted position it is tensed and in the abducted position it is relaxed now we have the relations you can see here in the relation we have superior relations we have inferior anterior and posterior relations if i'll take a coronal section here so the anterior relations are straight head of rectus femoris tendons of the iliopsoas the synovial bursa will be deep to the iliopsoas muscles then femoral nerve femoral artery femoral vein and the pectineus muscle so these all are the structure is forming the the anterior relations of the hip joint now we have the inferior relation is formed by the obturator externus muscles. Superior relation is formed by the gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, reflected head of rectus femoris. While the posterior relation is formed by again the, the pyriformis, 
the sciatic nerve, the obturator internus, and the, the two gamilla, that is superior gamillus and inferior gamillus, quartus femoris, and on the back side, the gluteus maximus muscles will be there. And deep to that, we have the nerve that is known as nerve to caratus femoris is also present. Let's know the blood supply of the hip joint. Blood supply is done by branches of obturator artery, medial and the lateral circumflex femoral artery, superior and inferior gluteal arteries, and retinocular arteries, which supplies the head and neck of the femur. Even you can see here in the diagram, this is known as the acetabular branches. Retinocular, the artery will be there. Again, the nutrient artery is there, and the branches are medial and the lateral circumflex femoral arteries are there. Now, these acetabular branches, it is a branch of obturator artery or it is a branch of medial circumflex femoral artery. This artery reach the head through the head, through the round ligament of head of the femur and supplies the hip joint. Then we have the retinacular vessels. It is the main, the artery which is supplying to the hip joint. So it is a branch of medial circumflex femoral artery and runs along the neck of the femur through the retinaculum of the fibrous capsules. Third one, that is known as nutrient artery which supplies the neck and head of the femoral supplied by femoral nerve through the nerve to rectus femoris it is also supplied by anterior division of obturator nerve nerve to quadratus femoris and by superior gluteal nerves also now movements which is taken place near the hip joint is flexion extension abduction adduction and circumduction you can see this is known as medial rotation the lateral rotation extension abduction and flexions and extension all the movements is shown here now what are the muscles which is producing the movement near the hip joint so flexion is done by psoas major iliacus along with that we have the pectineus rectus femoris sartorius then we have erector longus the extension is done by gluteus maximus as well as the hamstring muscles also then another muscles is known as tensor facial lata then adduction is done by adductor longus, brevis, magnus. It is also assisted by pectineus and gracilis muscles. Abduction is done by the gluteus medius, minimus, and tensor facial lat as well as the sartorius. Medial rotation is done by gluteus medius, minimus, and lateral rotation is done by the six muscles that is obturator internus, externus, piriformis, superior and inferior gamilae, and the quadratus femoris. If you see the degree of movement, extension is 15 degree, abduction is 50 degree, medial rotation is 25 degree, and lateral rotation is 60 degree. Let's know the clinical anatomy of the hip joint. Hip joint is commonly affected by disease or by injuries. There is a term known as porth disease. That is known as the flattening of the head of the femur. So in the x-ray, you can see there is a space in the hip joint. And you can see here the, the flattening of the, the femoral head is seen here. Then there is a term known as disease of the hip joint, mainly tuberculosis. So in any disease, there is referred pain is felt in the knee due to common nerve supply. There is a term known as osteoarthritis that is seen in the disease of the old age. Or you can see in the old age it is seen due to growth of the osteopites at the articular surface you can see here in the diagram and movements are limited and it is painful and there is a term known as dislocations of the hip joint it is a congenital or it can be acquired congenital due to non-development of upper part of acetabulum or dislocation is more common in the posterior aspect and less common in the anterior aspect in the posterior dislocation sciatic nerve can be injured okay let's know the other clinical aspect of the hip joint there can be a fracture of the neck of the femur that can be subcapital that is near the neck of the femur it can be cervical that is near the middle it can be basal near the trochanter it can be pre trochanteric fracture distal to the two trochanter you can see here in the diagram subcapital cervical basal and pretrochantric fracture. Even you can see here in the diagram that is a trochantric fracture is seen here. Then 
we have the term known as displacement of the greater trochanter. So you have to know about three lines that is known as Nelaton's line, Senton's lines, Shoemaker's lines. What is this Nelaton's line? It is a line joining the anterior superior iliac spine to the ischial tuberosity and this line will pass through the highest part of greater trochanter. Now Senton's line means it is represented by a continuous curved line which is formed by upper border of obturator foramen and the lower margin of the neck of the femur and this curve is disrupted in the fracture of neck of the femur or during the dislocation of the hip joint. Now we have to know about shoemaker's line. It is a straight line that extends from the tip of the greater trochanter to the anterior superior iliac spine and continues to the anterior abdominal wall to reach the umbilicus. But if greater trochanter is elevated, example, the fracture of the neck of the femur, this line will pass below the umbilicus. Thank you.